Sarah McLachlan has some just haunting tunes, building a mystery. Of course, this is another one, Adia. Uh, when I first heard this 20 years ago or so, when it came out, I, it was, I couldn't get it out of my head. Had a couple students working on it, and finally, it's crossed my plate that this would make a good lesson here at, uh, at TG. Now, this is a song she plays in, uh, she doesn't really play the guitar in it. She does have guitar accompaniment. She plays it on the piano mostly, which means that it's got a, a lot of uh, typical piano inversions, chords with um, alternate bass notes, a D with F sharp in the bass, an A with E in the bass, things like that. So we're gonna be looking at some inversions of chords. <clears throat> we're, there's a nice little, uh, there's some nice little guitar licks. Um, just short little fills that that come in. She does it, we're going to look at it capoed at the first fret in the key of D, which puts it in the real key of E flat. And this is what an acoustic guitar would do to play along with her. In, in a couple videos, you'll you'll see some guitar players capoed at the first, if they're, if they're playing along. Now there's a short little interlude that we'll take a look at as well that comes out of the second chorus. It ends there, it goes something like this. So I have nice little things thrown in there and a lot of chords. I'm going to do most of this with a pick, but you could probably, you could do it as well with fingers, but we need some kind of percussion in there in, just to keep it moving since we're doing it with only one guitar. Um, and let's see, there's one more thing I needed to tell you about it, but I can't remember now what it was. But we will talk about some unusual chords and some cool theory. We've got some diminished chords and a few other kind of stretchy things. One of the Ds with F sharps in the bass, we might play Bard at the second fret using the C family. That will be sort of up to you, and we'll talk about a few um, shortcuts you might be able to take as well. So, coming up, a guitar lesson. Of all things, imagine that on Adia. <laughs> First thing I want to talk about is the chords. Um, we have mostly chords from the key of, of D with a few slight little stretches out of it. And so we're going to see D chords in a couple of different ways. Our standard D played here. We're going to sometimes need, actually more than sometimes, need D with F sharp in the bass. Couple choices there. You can wrap your thumb around and get the F sharp in the bass with your thumb there. You could play it with four fingers, your first finger on the F sharp in the bass, and the other three playing a standard D, at which point it'd be fine to be killing the fifth string. It doesn't matter whether the A is ringing or not. Um, you could also use the, the C family for a bar at the second fret. This would be as if you played a C chord with your second, third, and fourth fingers, moved it up a whole step, and put a bar at the second, and that gets the F sharp in the bass, along with a couple other notes that we need on the third and first strings with it. So this is a nice way to do it. The main time I would do this is in the, in really in the introduction, when we have the quick change in the second line from D with F sharp, even though in the tab I don't have an F sharp there in the bass, to the F sharp seven. So the really quick change from D with F sharp to F sharp seven sounds much nicer if you grab this. And you have plenty of time to get there because we're coming from a G major seven at that point. And um, anyway, so that's our choices on our D chords. We're gonna see some standard Gs and some G major 7s. Now with G major 7, the way I like to play it in this song is open rather than a barred version or a extended version or something like that. And so for G major 7, we need just an F sharp up on the top rather than a G. And my preference for fingering for this is to use your leave your third finger on the G in the bass and use your second finger for the F sharp, having your third finger kill the fifth string. Now this makes for a really easy change from D, because there's a couple times we're going from D to G major 7. And a lot of the times on the G major 7s, we can even leave the F sharp off and get an E in there, letting it be a 6. That might be a little bit of the variation that we, that we do in there. So there are the two main things that happen on D chords, uh, on G chords. We're going to see a few different A's, uh, standard chord 5, A7, A sus 2, 
Yeah, I really only use that in the intro, um, and that would be, of course, the second, second and third fingers on the third and fourth strings. And um, I don't know if there's any place where we're going to use a normal A. We could, but most of the A's can be A sevens. There are a couple spots that we want to um, maybe not do that. But but if you played standard A, that would be this A seven. Usually we'd want the open A seven rather than the high A seven. It's a little too in your face kind of kind of sound there. Uh, a couple of the normal minor chords, B minor, re really prominent chord in the song. I'm going to start with the intro because it includes a nice little fill that we're going to use later on in the verse too. So if you take a look at the tab, um, it opens up with a. A, a pickup bass note, an F sharp in there, and then come in with the strum on the B minor chord. To G, and then to a D with F sharp in the bass. Now this one I would play with my with my thumb. And if you don't get the F sharp in the bass at all in the song, it's fine. You can play all the D chords just standard like that. So the beginning of the intro, we've got the B minor to G. Notice they're all just eighth notes coming in on the third eighth note of the measure, which would be the and of two, one and two, and then just let the chord ring, but pick out the D. D, C sharp, B, I come to the fourth, uh, fourth, fourth fret of the third string for this, and then get my, and use my fourth finger for it, because once we finish that little five note eighth note run, we need to land back on a B minor chord. So. strong with the B minor on the first beat of the next measure. B minor to G, and this time to F sharp minor. Now in the tab, I've got an A in parentheses, and this is something that would be totally optional, and actually this could happen pretty much the time, there's only, most of the time when you're on F sharp minor, I wouldn't do this in the outro F sharp minor, but the F sharp minor at the end of the first line of the verse, one, two, three, you could a hammer on to an A, at the fifth fret would be a nice little lead in to the D chord that is the beginning of the second line. Now in the intro, this is where we're going to have our first D to G major 7, and then the quick D with F sharp in the bass to F sharp 7 to B minor. So this is where I'd recommend this D, the, the C shape at the second fret. You could still do it this way, but it's a little tougher to get quickly from a wraparound D to a clean F sharp 7. So you might find that more difficult than coming from the G major 7, two beats of D to a G major 7, then one of D with F sharp in the bass, and then to our B minor. The verse is uh, very similar to the intro, just a little bit more, a little extended and, and slightly different. So what we heard in the intro sounds like it might be the first verse, but it's not. So anyway, the verse does open up with, and I don't have anything in the tab for this. So in the tab, I just put the intro and the interlude, which we'll get to a little bit later. But let's just talk about what happens in, in the verse. We open up with the same thing that the, the intro started with, and that's a B minor to G. This time I'd play the open G. D with F sharp, I would I would probably do my thumb one here because because I'm still going to throw that little fill in from the intro, heading to that that B minor in the third measure, then the B minor to G and the F sharp minor. So it's really exactly the same as the intro. And if you want to throw the A in at the end, nice little touch. Um, the second line of the verse is our D to G major seven. Now I didn't talk about other choices for the G major 7 because you because you could do it with your first and second fingers but like I mentioned I do like to do it with my second and third because your second fingers is in the same spot as it was for the D chord so the D major so the G major 7 and now this next measure we the D with the F sharp and the A with E in the basses it's really helpful to hit those bass notes or don't bother with them you could just play a D chord and an A chord and then go to E minor and a G and an A but so if you want to get the D, the F sharp in the bass there, hit it on the first beat of that, of that measure. So from the beginning of that line, D to G major 7 to the F sharp in the bass and the E in the bass, really brings out what we hear on the piano. 
Then E minor, definitely don't want an E minor seven here because it's a really quick change to G. All I would really do is grab the G in the bass on beat two. One, two, 